Hey there, welcome back to this week's episode of Scry With Me. I'm excited to have you here on our channel. Let's dive into the messages from Source this week. All right, first message is... Coyote encourages you to recognize that the mess you are in is largely your own fault. So we landed on page 96 as well as Coyote symbolism, okay? Um, it's Coyotes are probably known symbolically to be mysterious as well as a joker or a trickster because of its highly amusing antics and such and its habit of appearing to ignore the obvious, okay? So right here for our first message is Coyote. All right, let's go ahead and get the second message for the Scry With Me episode. Oh, we're, we're landing on animal symbolism. You know what? Weird enough, actually, before I started setting up all this, I was debating on actually pulling out the animal cards because I said I was going to do it last time, but I didn't. So maybe I will. I'll pull them out in a little bit. So the next one we have is Fox. <laughs> now, they are very similar medicine to uh, the coyote. Uh, they're very cunning. Uh, primarily because their ability to observe the movements of others without being seen, okay? Um, the message that I landed on is, it is possible that your principal problems derive from your desire to prove yourself and make your presence felt. All right, let's go ahead and get into the third and final message for this Cry With Me episode. Hmm, I had heard them and seen them searching for me earlier. You want to know something funny? So this last message, when I, um, I had heard them and seen them searching for me earlier, the next chapter right here, it says animal medicine. So yeah, definitely pulling out the animal cards here. Um, wise teachers of the more than human world. This is from the Lightning in My Blood book. This is actually a really good chapter, and I got really stuck in this chapter. I had to read it twice. So, yeah, if that's not an indicator to pull out these animal medicine cards, then I don't know what it is. I'm going to go ahead and get them really quick. Right. I was going to do charms, and maybe I will, but there's a high possibility I won't. So, let's see what the cards have in store. Are there any messages from the spirit animal world that need to come forth for this reading? As we got two, not one, but two indicators, or actually three indicators to work with animal medicine today, animal symbolism. So let's see what messages come forth. We got the hawk. All right, the visionary. Okay, I know you can't really see the image that well. Sorry about that. Um, so we have healing, vision, rebirth, spirituality. There are many species of hawks, each with its own legends associated with folklore. The birds have symbolized healing, freedom, vision, and rebirth. Yeah, the visionaries. In Egyptian mythology, it, no, can we talk? In Egyptian mythology, Isis is a goddess of abundance and fertility. Assumes the shape of a hawk as she gives birth to her son, Horus who then dies and is reborn. She also becomes a hawk to join her husband, Osiris, in the underworld. Native Americans associate the hawk with potent magic and use its feather in healing rituals and ceremonies to bring rain. All right. So we have hawk here. So I have, I'm assuming if you have been seeing hawks, maybe um, coyotes or foxes, then... This reading is definitely meant for you. We also have goat, right? We have goat, as you can see down here. Caprice, mischief, sexuality, and fertility. The Greek set, set, satar was a part goat and part man who represented lys... Oh my god, I don't even want to say it. Lystiosness. I, I don't even know what that word means, okay? Mischief and caprice. The goat was also... 
uh, the symbol of Pan, the woodland god of the fox, fertility, and nature. Pan was a lusty deity whose emblem was the phallus, right? Boom. So when hunting was poor or the flocks declined, the Greeks would blame Pan and beat his image with squills, a type of bulbous herb, bulbous herb, to release his productive reproductive energies. Pan was thus an early scapegoat. I guess that's where that saying comes from. Russian peasant folklore tells of a similar mischievous forest spirit, the Leishi, who had goat hooves and horns, as well as black fur, wings, and a tail. The Greek god Dionysus uh, was also frequently represented by the image of the goat, someone with a Decionian character who considered frenzied, lawless, and possessing orgiastic props. What? Oh my god, these words are just something else. P R O P E. Prosperities, prosperities. Okay, way to make things confusing. <laughs> I feel like that's the kind of energy there is here, just confusing, unseen energy. Maybe that's why I can't read it right now. Okay, any more messages? <laughs> we got the frog. Okay, frog, feminine energy creation. The frog is a creature of the water and has been associated with new life. In Egypt, frogs were placed on mummies to facilitate rebirth. The abundance of frogs at the time of the annual Nile flood also associated with vicinity. In South America, the Orinoco people considered the frog to be lord over water, a feminine symbol, and did not kill them. Among Native American peoples in North America, the frog has been associated with the moon, which also has a feminine symbol. One story tells of a frog jumping onto the moon, where it rules for eternity. Okay. All right, let's see what Healing Crystal Oracle card comes up. And then we'll go ahead and dive into further what this means. And then maybe we'll draw a charm or two. So, any messages from the Healing Crystal Oracle? Any messages from the Healing Crystal Oracle? Any messages? Expanded Awareness. Alright, we're just going to set it right here. Expanded Awareness. I'm only going to draw two of these because I'm going to read them out of the book for you guys. Relationship Healing. Okay, let's see. Maybe let's draw a charm. Draw two. We have dolphin as well as fairy. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so it's funny that we even got those two because dolphins are also very elusive. They only want you to see them when it is necessary. And when you do see dolphins, I mean, I imagine, you know, when you're out, you know, out in the water, on the ocean, and you see a dolphin, you just get this overwhelming sense of, wow, they do exist. Look at them. Like, they're just so, they're a rarity, right? And with fairies, too, I mean, you know, you got the fae world and all that kind of kind of stuff. You know, you hear about people who look through um, holy stones or wishing stones to see fairies in the fairy world. But those are, if you don't know what those are, those are basically rocks that you find out in riverbeds, creeks, or streams, and they have a hole through it. They consider these very lucky stones to find and to have. And if you had the means of actually finding one, you would be able to see fairies, gnomes, goblins, and such. Same thing, the same energy kind of resonates with the fairy. They only want you to see you. They will only want you to see them when they want you to. You will only see them when they want you to. So you can't really go out looking for them, you know? And as we have here in the message for the scrying, I'm also noticing that in the third message, I had heard them and seen them searching for me earlier. So it seems like as if you 
are either a avoiding a problem and you're 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 hiding out waiting for something to kind of just brush over right to kind of just cool over or b you're hoping somebody else would come out of that kind of energy like you're hoping somebody else will come out of being this elusive type of person and be more direct. It could be business related, it could be relationship related, personal or professional. The first message here we have for scrying is Coyote encourages you to recognize that the mess you are in is largely your own fault. So maybe it could be you, you know? I don't know why I wrote down lesson of experience. Maybe this is something you should learn from the past, not to be avoidant and to be proactive in the steps you take when it comes to certain connections, you know? It is possible, so for the second message we have Fox, it is possible that your principal problems derive from your desire to prove yourself and to make yourself, make your presence felt. Okay, when I think of somebody who has a means of wanting to prove themselves, I see somebody who wasn't seen as a child, right? Somebody who wasn't validated as a child. So, of course, this sets this inner child wound, this, this trauma that then gets repeat, repeated throughout relationships as they get older. So this avoidance pattern that you have is largely because of the... the the improper validation and, and the ridicule maybe that, see, I can't even talk today. The ridicule that you may have experienced, thank you, Mercury and Retrograde, is taking a toll on your personal relationships. It's probably why you can't really connect to the satisfaction you may want to connect because I'm also seeing here with the Morganite, the relationship healing card, as we're gonna read in a little bit, I would say just off that alone, your relationships are a part of your healing journey. You know, you don't just get into relationships just for the sake of it. You learn through being with others. You know, you wouldn't know yourself if it wasn't from experiencing certain connections with certain individuals. But a lot of the turmoil that is manifested throughout these relationships is largely because of you not wanting to address the trauma, the shadow. And I understand exactly how scary that is. But considering this year is a numerological code six year, which is 2022, two plus two plus two equals six, which in numerology um, indicates it's a year of love, balance, and relationships. I would suggest this is something that you should go head into and not avoid it anymore you know because i'm sure you would want a relationship to work out but as i'm sensing through this reading there's parts of you that are understanding this and wants to keep pushing it off but there's no pushing it off anymore this expanded awareness whatever is coming in is also going to push you towards this soulful goal okay this isn't something that is just kind of like a 3d goal this is a soul goal this is for you to be open to healing your relationship patterns rebirth with the hawk healing sexuality fertility as well as understanding you know, when to set boundaries and, and not just use your means of your body to connect with somebody. Because maybe you had done that a lot in the past. That was your only means of connecting with somebody was sexual. Frog, feminine energy creation. Yeah. So maybe instead about being so action-based with the masculine energy, because the masculine energy is all about action, you're being guided by your guides and the universe to step more into 
a fluid-based movement of connection rather than just friction and action. You know what I'm saying? Okay, let's go ahead and read these cards and see what they say, and then we'll go ahead and close out this reading, okay? All right, the first card we have is Expanded Awareness. This crystal azurite that's connected to this card is also connected to your third eye chakra. The crystal medicine. Azurite comes in your world today to assist you to see beyond the illusion. Exactly. This medicine invites you to expand your awareness, allowing you to see things in a different light. When you can expand your awareness and perception around old beliefs, see, there we go, and patterns, deep, profound healing is possible on many levels. This crystal is inviting you to revisit old pain, oh my God, with the intention, I just said that, with the intention of seeing it with an expanded perspective. It is time to release the old, right? Because we're heading into this new year. We're heading into a new cycle, okay? And perception and be open to expanded awareness as you bring about freedom and deep healing in your life. When you can open and expand through your awareness, abundance of opportunities are created and miracles occur. And also, if you haven't checked out those weekly miracle videos, go ahead and check it out. I have, I don't know if y'all seen them, but I've been reading once a week a um, story submitted by somebody in a, in a book I have called Everyday Miracles. And I've been doing this as a reminder to remind you guys that miracles do fucking happen, guys. You just have to go ahead and set the right energy, set the right tone to allow them to come forth okay aside from just saying i believe it's about taking the aligned action as well all right you have attracted this card into your life today because your awareness is expanding into an exciting new level of consciousness you may have been feeling stuck in an old belief system feeling frustrated that you cannot see the truth and finding it difficult to receive clarity you are being encouraged to work deeply with the azurite to assist in expanding your awareness it is time to see things in a different light, and Azura has shown up to help you with this process. The veils of illusion are lifting, and the old ways of being and thinking, which do not serve you any longer, are falling away. New realms of consciousness and deeper expanded awareness begin to make their presence known in your reality. Feel yourself being lifted into new heights as you start to view your life from a higher perspective. Azura allows you to see yourself, your current situation, and your journey with deeper clarity. Know that you're opening to higher planes of consciousness and feel yourself growing into this exciting and life-changing way of being. All right, the next and last card for this reading, um, to sum up this whole reading, is Morganite, relationship healing. This Morganite crystal is actually connected to the heart chakra. Um, I actually was thinking about getting it, by the way. Morganite is a powerful medicine that heals old pain and wounds around your relationships. <sighs> Breathe in this gentle yet powerful energy deep into your heart as you open yourself to receive its divine love. This beautiful crystal, the grandmother stone, as you would think like grandmother energy, right? Unconditional love of rose quartz holds an even, even deeper wisdom of love. It assists you to deeply love yourself and to expand this universal love out into the world in order to love all that is and beyond. It also helps you to look honestly at old sabotaging relationship patterns that are keeping you stuck in a stagnant, stale energy. Morganite invites you to take a leap of faith into the heart where you can find strength and courage to heal. All right. The oracle message for this card. If you have attracted this powerful healing card, it signifies that your current relationship is undergoing deep healing and transformation. Things may have been challenging as of late, so Morganite has shown up to bless you with its healing rays to assist you in any healing required for you to move forward in your relationship in a loving and positive way. There are amazing opportunities for personal growth and deeper connection available to you at this time. Open up to allow the devils to shine their healing light upon you so you can receive this awakening of the heart. The devils urge you to hand over your past relationship hurts and old wounds that are no longer serving you. It is time to allow the layers of protection to dissolve and to be open to healing with ease and grace. Be aware that what feels like a crisis can often be a profound catalyst for change. 
deep wounds and old patterns may be resurfacing right now, especially with um, Venus and Mercury in retrograde, okay? No joke. Um, may be resurfacing in order to provide great opportunities for transformation, change, and renewal. Let's say you have an ex who keeps popping up, right? Um, be clear about where your intentions are and be honest about, you know, in, in communication wise, even though it's a pain in the ass with Mercury being in retrograde, Venus in retrograde is also highlighting us to be honest and open about our intentions in the heart space with our connections to others. Okay. So yeah, I would suggest just being direct because this indirect approach isn't doing you justice anymore. So it says, let go of old self-sabotaging patterns and you will deepen your wisdom and understanding of relationships. And as you experience this deep personal healing from past relationships and old wounds, you will feel your relationship with yourself deepen and a new light shining in your heart. Know that you are deserving of a loving, divine relationship. And it is now time to truly embody and believe this for yourself. You deserve it. Allow your heart to shine and to be loved and to love and to love all that is. Man, that's beautiful. Yeah, so with the coyote and the fox, everything it kind of just ties in together. This elusive energy that you've been you've been putting out there, maybe just this avoidant, maybe you have an avoidant attachment style, you know, when it comes to relationships, something along those lines, because these are all all the problems that you're experiencing in your relationships come straight back to you. No one else. Nobody else causes our pattern. We are the ones that are in charge of our own fate and destiny. So we have to take accountability for our actions as well. It's not just everybody else doing something to us. We are always the ones that are held accountable for what we're doing to ourselves. And sometimes self-sabotaging behavior isn't noticeable. But what is noticeable is the act of noticing. So taking recognition. In other words, I really hope you found resonance with this reading. Go ahead and check out my services. If you would like a personal reading from me, I am open for personal readings. Okay. Just let y'all know. All right. But until next time, I'll see y'all next week. Seekers. Y'all take care. Okay. Bye.